Today's video is sponsored by Native Sons Goods, makers of the highest quality woven guitar, bag, and camera straps you'll ever see. Native Sons straps are handmade one at a time in the USA with unparalleled love and care. Click the link in the description to check out their new expanded lineup featuring all new 3-inch guitar straps. And remember, when you support my sponsor, you support this channel, and I sure appreciate it. Hello, fillies and fellers. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to turn an old tube that you no longer need, a tube socket, and a cheap digital multimeter into a cheap set of bias probes for your tube amp. If that sounds like something you'd be interested in, stick around. All right, first, you might notice that this digital multimeter is one that you can get from Harbor Freight. If you've watched uh, one of my videos on shopping at Harbor Freight, uh, you will recognize this. You can actually get these multimeters a lot of times for free. I'm going to show you how to turn this and the probes that comes with it. It also has a battery included, which is kind of unheard of, uh, into a set of bias probes. And the first thing we need to do, we need to find ourselves an old tube. Now, you can get uh, an any kind of old tube with a base like this or in this case what I'm gonna do I'm gonna use a tube that's already happens to be broken now what I would have done normally if I did not have this broken tube on hand which I've already pulled apart and I've already separated the leads on this thing uh, if I did not have this I, what I would do is just smash the glass on this and separate each of the little you can actually see down inside of there, you can see that each one of the pins goes up and connects to one of the elements in this tube. You can break the glass and, and clip all of those leads, separating those elements. But since, again, since we already have this tube that was broken for me, I'm gonna start with this. Okay, first things first, uh, these tube sockets, you can get these at parts suppliers such as Antique Electronic Supply, that's the part supplier that I usually use. Uh, but the first thing we're gonna have to do is remove this, uh, this outer mounting ring right here, this bracket. So we'll just take a small screwdriver or some other implement so that we can pry these tabs up. So that's the part we want right there. I'm just cutting off these uh, smaller little extensions. Okay, so that's pretty much all of those. You can see what I've done. I just removed all those extensions that were extending out. There are a couple of them are long enough already, but not all of them are. So what we're going to do, we're going to actually solder on some extensions. Okay, so there are all of those bent into shapes that we can solder to. Now we're going to add some leads to these, and I'm going to use a fairly thick gauge. I'm going to see what I have on hand. Okay, what I have on hand here is uh, I have a 16 gauge tinned copper wire, and this is what I'm going to use to make these connections. And the reason is this is fairly thick wire, and it's going to hold up well. It's not going to bend on me. You can see here what I've done. I've actually curled the end of this piece of wire into a loop and I've looped it around the existing uh, lead here on the socket. we need to uh, solder all of these connections except for the plate and on 6L6s, 6V6s, all of the common tube types the plate is going to be pin 3 and we're lucky here that on both of these components the pin numbers are actually labeled you can see them labeled over here and they are also labeled if we look very closely on this socket if you have an old tube and a socket uh, that are not labeled like this one. You can just follow the key. So what you want to do is just make the key uh, correspond. So you can see here this indentation will correspond with this indentation. So you want to line them up that way.
Okay, right now I have them all through there and I'm just uh, lifting pin three. I found it easier to put them all down on there. Uh, just one at a time, just kind of work my way around in a spiral. And then I'm coming back right now and taking pin three off. So we'll just lift it up like so. And then later we're gonna do something different with pin three. Longer leads. Okay, so what we're left with is this. And we'll take the probes from the package and we're going to use those. take the ends of our probe and add some shrink tubing. Okay, now we're going to solder one of our probes to the top that goes to the socket and we're going to solder the other probe down here to this lead that goes to uh, pin 3 on the base. Okay, so there are those soldered on. Okay, now once you have the probe built, like so, this is ready to be plugged into an amplifier. I've intentionally left the lead right here open. And you'd be able to then uh, just put your probe on here, your regular probe, from another multimeter and measure the plate voltage at this point. So uh, you can measure plate voltage um, without opening up the amp. You can also measure uh, the plate current because you're you're placing your meter in the path of the uh, plate voltage supply. So um, what you want to do is set this to 200 milliamp scale. We'll turn it on like so and let's uh, let's test it out and see how it works. Now what you have to do with your probes, uh, you'll set on this multimeter, your reading is most likely, I mean, unless it's way off and something's terribly wrong, your reading is most likely going to be under 200 milliamps. So you'll want to use uh, this socket here for testing. If you're not sure if it's going to be under 200 milliamps, if you think that your, your stuff might be way off, put it in the 5 amp uh, probe socket and start with that um, but otherwise you can use uh, this one down here and that will allow you to use uh, the DC the DC amps measurements here and you want to put it on uh, 200 milliamp uh, so we have all this ready to go we have it set up our probe is on so let's go ahead and flip the amp off of standby and see what reading we get right here 35.6 milliamps. So this is the actual current that's flowing uh, to the plate of this tube. And all as long as this meter is accurate, this will be accurate. Now if we're unsure, we can take these probes out of this meter and we can move them to a different meter. Never do this with the amplifier on. You uh, want to turn the amp off or at least turn the current off by uh, putting it into standby mode. So let's go ahead and take that probe off. 
and we'll remove them from here, these probes. So what we want to do is we want to test the accuracy of this meter with it with my fluke. Now my fluke is probably going to be a lot more accurate than this this thing here. 35 is what we got on this one, 35 or thereabouts, and we're getting 34.4, 34.5, so round it up to 35. That's pretty pretty damn accurate. So yeah, that's the way this works. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If you have, please hit subscribe down below. And for now, Y'all take care.